Welcome to the REI Foundation Podcast, where we cover all the steps and strategies to make your real estate dreams a reality. Now your hosts, Jason and Peely. Hi, everybody, and welcome again to the REI Foundation podcast with Jason and Peely. So in celebration of our 100th episode, we've been bringing on our mentors and our friends who have really been key in our growth this year. So we welcome Andy McFarlane. Boom! Wow. You didn't tell me that's why you were bringing me on. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> That's a huge pat on the back. I don't know what I deserve, so, but I'll take it. I'll if everybody it. remembers out there, we had Andy back on in episode seven, which seems like forever ago, but it was just a short time ago. But just a quick recap, go back and listen to that episode. Andy crushes it as he always does. He's currently wholesaling, wholesaling, right? Yeah. Now yeah. in three different states, does about 250 transactions, probably is just going to underdo what he actually does a year, just absolutely has an awesome team, a great system. And it's everything that if you are a wholesaler, you should strive to be. Plus Andy's an amazing guy. So Andy, thank you so much for being back with us today. And we always start the new segment here is what do you typically tell people you do when they ask you? Oh, that's so tough. That's so hard. (laughs) Oh, typically I say real estate stuff. Uh, sometimes I'll tell people entrepreneur. It depends on how deep of a conversation I want to get into with people, but nobody understands what to do. Cause when you say real estate stuff, they say, Oh, you're a real estate agent. And then I typically follow up with, well, no, I'm not an agent. So sometimes I'll just say eh, business things. I'm just do business stuff. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> business that's a tough things, question. Though. That's such a tough question. <laughs> you guys, that's a tough one out of the gate. So why, why do you do these business things that you do? Why do I do these things? This is just going to get deep today. Uh-huh. You know, it's stuff that just uh, it just started going, and one thing leads to the next. I never intended to be on step ten. I mean, if I'm on step ten now, I just started with step one, and then rolled into step two, three, four, and then you look up, and you just kind of like kind of got into these things. I would be lying if I told you 15 years ago I wanted to have uh, multiple different you know, digital marketing company and a and a house buying company and do rentals and do loans. I, I I never envisioned that. It just started with step one, and I didn't know what I didn't know. And it just snowballed into where we are today. Oh, and the education stuff, right? That I, I do some of that, some teaching, mentoring and stuff. I never, not a million years. I didn't, I didn't plan this. I didn't plan it. So on accident, I guess you ah. could say. Line upon line, on accident. So if you weren't here with us right now on this podcast, what would you be doing? <sighs> That's a great question. I mean, I do map out my days. So I know like at the beginning of the week. So at the start of the year, I set up my goals, personal and, and all business goals and all stuff. At the beginning of the week, I... I lay out some key strategic things I need to do that week. And then I push those to my days, the things that I need to do that day, both ABC list, right? So this is on my A list because you guys blocked up the time for this. Um, so what would I be doing? I'd be doing something else that's on my A list. That's what I'd be doing. Awesome. Yeah. So let's talk about, let's just segue sort of bit a little bit into that. Talk about your goals a little bit. What are your overarching goals for this year? Oh, they are diving deep. Um, you want personal or you want business? You want both. You give us a, a mix of both if you're oh, open to share. Yeah. Um, so I've got this see behind me here. You, you, those of you there on just the podcast can't see this, but behind me, you see all these, these notebooks that are there. What mm-hmm. those notebooks are is my goals um, from years past. So at the beginning of a year, I get a new notebook. I get like a leather bound journal. So I'll show you this one. That happens to be for this year. Uh, at the beginning of the year, I will spend a lot of time thinking about what well, the end of the year. So a lot of time thinking about what I want to do for the next year. And then um, I mull over my goals and then I, I, I write them all down. So I write down my goals in all different categories into, this, into my notebook for the year. And then um, every week, I kind of write down the high points of things that happened that week. And I throw away my old week and I start with my new week. But my goals, you'd think they'd be primarily business goals, but they're actually not. Most of my goals are written are, are um, kind of family goals and lifestyle goals and things that I want to do. The things I feel like are most important in my life, I try to start with that. And then I back into some business goals. So I have like two business goals and I have probably 10 of the other, other goals. So I don't know if you want me to dive deeper into some of those, but, um, Let's dive deep. You want to dive deep? Yeah, you want to get real with two people? Two if you're open for it. You guys are really, you guys are really getting, getting real with this stuff. What'd you say, Jason? What'd you want? Uh, you can give us two of each if you want. Just search two of or, each? Or, or you guys maybe. really want me to read, you want me to read them? You want me to show you some of these things are? Would love yes. it. Okay. So, um, my top goals are, I want to be, um, I'm a Christian and, and I think that I believe in seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things should be added unto you. So this, this year, my theme is to increase my spiritual net worth. 
So as it goes from there, my, some of my spiritual goals, there's a lot of things I already do, but two things that I want to be studying this year. One, uh, on the scriptures, under the topical guide, uh, you guys wanted it. So the Jesus Christ under the topical guide, I want to read every scripture that has to do with Jesus. So I want to study his life that way. So that's what I'm going to do before the end of the year. And there's also some other uh, talks, conference talks that I want to read and underline and highlight for the end of the year. So that's some spiritual stuff I want to work on, among other, thing, other things I can already do. Family, I'm going to be do scripture study with my wife every night and say prayers with her every night. Um, I'm going to give my wife some unstructured break time because she needs that time to un- relax and unwind. I'm going to spend focused and present time with my family every week, at least 20 hours. Um, I'm going to spend uh, 13 days of this year uh, on a boat with my family because that's important to me. Nice. Um, yeah, and uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go skiing 20 days this year. So those are all the things that like these are things that are important to me, right? Uh, and the business goals. Here's where you guys really want. I'm sorry for boring you guys with other stuff. <laughs> no. the business goals. Great. My house buying and wholesaling company. I want to do six million dollars of top line projected uh, revenue for 2018. And then the digital marketing company, we want to grow that as well. We want to uh, add, add more clients from a, a PPC perspective and then help them with other online stuff as well. So that's, those are the business ones. And I do have some financial stuff as it pertains to income and just you know, stuff that I, we don't need to get into that stuff. But that's it. Two main business goals. It's the digital marketing company and the house buying company. That's that it. That is awesome. I mean, like, don't apologize for that. Yeah. I mean, we're firm believers and I think... I think you've told us this before. You have to take care of self before yeah. you can take care of everything else. And I mean, yeah. one of the big reasons this podcast exists is that we want to be able to create the lifestyle that we want and then use yeah. the real estate to be able to offer us the personal lifestyle we want. And Absolutely. Yeah. And we forget that oftentimes. We get so busy in the doing that we forget that uh, to enjoy the journey and to enjoy yes. where you're going. And, and that all starts with being intentional about putting in those things that you said you wanted. Cause you'll find yourself at the end of 10, 20, 30 years, just looking up and you might have a pile of money, but you missed the whole life. And the time is the one non-renewable resource. We, the things that we get for free, ironically, we don't value. We take them lightly. The things that we, we do cost money. We, we, you know, the houses, the cars, the vacations, we value that more, but really what about the stuff for free? What about your mind? What about the ability to hear, to see, to think like your friendships? What about your like relationship with your family? It's free. So we exactly. undervalue it. So I want to make the one point on goals is that I read somewhere, I, I'm, I'm going to be off in some context, but I think 98% of people don't write down their goals. And of the 2% they, that do, they are X multipliers so many times more likely to exceed and, and reach just unsurmountable uh, goals. So yeah, it's great. Uh, I do it as well. It's, it's something that it, it takes... It just like anything else, because you get up in the morning and the morning flies, and it takes commitment just to get to that point. And just, uh, but yeah, it's awesome, Andy. We love it. Absolutely. Well, what thanks for you, letting me be open with those. What would you say would be your greatest achievement? <sighs> My greatest achievement, man. You guys are really pulling out some deep ones today. <laughs> um, you know, this is tough. This is just coming to my mind. I know this is actually my greatest achievement, but who I'm becoming. Um, and through this process of life and the things, just who I'm becoming, you know, the changes that have been, everything that's happened to me in my life has molded me into who I am. So I think that's it. I think it's the, my greatest achievement is probably just myself and the growth and how I've grown over time and just who I've become and who I think I'm going to become, you know, the change that's happened to me. And that's, I know that's a deep answer to a deep question too, but. Um, no, that's a great answer. But, you know, what do you feel is the, because we've had you on and we had you on again for the seventh episode. How would you feel that you've grown since then? That's since a, then. That's, that's I'd awesome. say that's about six months. Um, how have I grown since in the last six months? I'm um, certainly from a business standpoint, the team has grown and we're continually learning things there because just the more people you add, the more stuff you're just learning at a faster pace. So definitely learning more there, constantly evolving there. Um, but as a person, I like to think that I'm always getting better. I'm always like, trying to refine who I am, what I do and, and try to be less selfish and more selfless, try to serve others, you know, serve, nice. try to be better for my wife and kids and everything. So I hope that I'm becoming less selfish as I, as I grow. I hope I'm learning to, yeah. I think yeah. you're one of the less selfish people that I know, Andy. I appreciate <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> so, what, would, what would you say is the least favorite thing for you as an entrepreneur? Uh, I can answer this because recently, I mean, I've been going through this tomorrow. I'm, I'm teaching one of the programs. We have a six figure flipping accelerator. I'm going to be teaching that. So a lot of people are going to be coming to Utah. They're probably coming tonight actually for this event that I'm, I'm going to be putting on for the next two days. And, um, 
preparation. The answer is I don't like preparing. I'm a guy that likes to just, just go and do stuff, but the preparation I've had to put into that, it's like pulling teeth for me to really sit down and like brainstorm stuff and put together presentations. It's really hard for me now is because I really want to show up really well for people and to make sure that I give them the most value possible. Cause I, I mean, people's time is valuable and their money they spend. So I want to make sure that I over deliver for them. But the preparation for me, man, it's like, it's been gnawing on me for weeks. So I really dislike preparation. I did force yourself to get prepared. I'm asking I mean, myself serving because I'm horrible at the same thing. Yeah, I know I have to. So I try to trick myself into it. I got a little thing in here that says, because you think you got to do the presentation, but my little mind hack for that is I don't have to do the presentation. I start with, like, I brainstorm first. So I'm like, I'm not preparing the presentation today. All I'm doing is brainstorming. So then I can write down all the brainstorms, mind dump everything. And then I go from a brainstorm to an outline. And then from an outline, I go to, to re- recording it down. And then I can edit off of that. So if you just think you have to write a presentation, for me, it's daunting. But if I could say I start with the brainstorm, then I'm going to make an outline, and then I'm going to record it, and then, then, it, then it becomes something. So that's how I mentally do. And plus, I know the date I have to do it. You guys heard about my goals. I back into the things. So for weeks and a month now or more, I've known. So I like, take baby steps along the way. But I'd be lying if I was saying that the presentation is not getting uh, honed today. Today. For what I'm giving tomorrow, all day, and then Saturday, all day. So, yeah. It's, I mean, it's it's all amazing stuff. And I can, like, we've had conversations before where that's kind of just off the cuff. So I can just imagine like you going from an off the cuff conversation to an amazingly put together presentation. Anybody that's not going to be at Six Flow Figure Flipping this weekend in Utah, they're missing out. I hope I bring it. I really hope I bring it. Cause I really do. I really, I really do think about that stuff. And even before any presentation, flip packing live, whatever, I really do think about and think, what can I deliver the most value with? Cause I never want to be the guy that's just eh, saying some fluff. I want to be like delivering the best I possibly can. Yeah. Awesome. If we were to ask someone around you and, and said, what is Andy the best in the world at? What would they say? Oh, the best in the world at that's an, I, I've had this exercise before. I've actually asked people when you ask what your, you, your, your genius is, I guess. And it's interesting because you can never come up with yourself. But the people that I've asked, it comes back to uh, kind of connecting with people. That's what they would say. That I can be present and focused with them and just block out the rest and just care about them and just listen. But that's also a weakness too, because I'll get lost in time just with one person and like ignore the rest of my schedule, you know? That's but why I, I can see that. You do do that. Yeah. All of a sudden you do become honed in um, and you just like, you make that person that you're talking with feel like the most important person. But you have this very inviting quality too. Yeah. So, so it, it's a, it's a push pull. We love it. So yes. yeah. I thank you. I appreciate it. But that's what people have told me. So it's hard to say about myself, but that's what I've heard. So. So what's the strangest thing you've ever done as an entrepreneur? <sighs> you know, I have many back when I used to go and sit in sellers houses and get in that vortex of like trying to care only about them. I found myself in many situations where I was just like, I can't believe I'm here right now doing this, right? You kind of like your, it's almost like you can go out of your body and like watch yourself in a situation. Like, is this really happening? And then you like get sucked back into the situation and you have to just focus on the Mac. Like everything is perfectly normal here. So I think in our industry, those of you that have gone to see sellers at their houses, you hear everything, you see everything and you, you kind of see how other people live. Cause we all assume people are like us and that's definitely not true. And especially with some of these motivated sellers that we deal with. So, um, I can think of some specific instances, but I don't, I don't know if you guys want me to go that deep in those things. But. Give us, give us one story. So there was one, I uh, went into a hoarder house filled with things. I mean, it's totally filled, barely a path to go through. This person was um, handicapped, uh, unfortunately very overweight, couldn't really move very well. So I had to go into their house to get a contract signed, walking through paths of stuff. And there's, I mean, lots of million, so many animals, dogs, cats, flies all over the wall, feces everywhere. The, the smell of that house from outside the house, it was horrendous. From inside the house, it was almost unbearable. When I left the house, by the way, I had to take off my shirt because it was just, I didn't touch anything, but just being in the house for the five minutes or 10 minutes I was there, it stuck to me. Like it stuck to my shirt. Like that was how bad the smell was. So I, I walked in there and was, I'm, I'm getting this contract signed, stepping on, you know, every, all these things, right? Kittens going around everywhere. Like this was like a 1500 square foot condo with like 150 animals in it. Like dead serious, right? It was crazy. What? So, and it was, it stunk and I'm trying to act like this is totally normal, right? I'm talking to her like she is, you know, she is a person, a human being and I'm valuing her. I'm trying to solve her problem and I did solve her problem and we're signing a contract. But in the midst of all of that, I'm going, how did I get right here right now? Right. But, um, took care of her, solved, solved her problem. And it was, it was a good situation moving forward for both of us. 
Um, but yeah, I, I was definitely in that going, how did I get here right now? Yeah. <laughs> what am I doing? What has my life become? That's like the quintessential, like when you think about and the next day houses. after Andy hired an acquisition manager. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I actually loved it. I really did love it. Cause I got to go and meet new people in new situations and try to problem solve. And for me, it was never about the money. It was like, if I can solve their problem, the money will come. And that happened, but that, I, I loved it. I wish, I wish I had the time to all do that. I've got other responsibilities now and I can't, it's not physically, feasibly possible for me, but it was awesome. It was so fun to do that. So if you weren't doing what you're doing now, uh, basically the, the huge wholesaling business, the huge PPC business, uh, what would you do? Maybe I'd be a counselor or something. I always feel like I'm a real estate counselor, but just listening to people and I love impacting people and sharing them the little bits of insight that I've got and the things that have helped me in my life. I love helping people with that, you know, and, not, and maybe not so much from what I, from what I say, but maybe they can see that, that the way I've done something, maybe it, it impacts in that way, but I would love to have a positive impact in people's life that way. Right. That's help them awesome. be better. Yeah. Positive impact and be better. Well, what do you consider to be a success as an entrepreneur? What is success to you? Yeah, this is, this is kind of easy from the house buying company's perspective. Um, we've got two, we've got one objective and one priority. And the number one objective helps us get to our priority. The number one objective in our house buying company is to make a profit. So that's not necessarily success, but you have to be profitable in a business and a company so that you can continue to move forward and hit your priorities. So I tell my guys, that's our number one objective, guys. We have to be profitable. It has to be in the black because I can't run a business in the red. Um, but our number one priority is to, uh, we rebranded recently to Enlight, E-N-L-I-G-H-T. Enlight Homebuyers is the name of the brand that we're putting forward now. Because that, that means all those things to me that we are to look as a team, constantly be trying to bring light into our own individual lives so that, that light will impact the team members We'll bring that into the team environment. And then also as a team, we'll be able to go out there and spread that light to, to other sellers and just whoever else. I mean, not just sellers, but everybody else they impact in their life. So the better we are as individuals and as team members, the better we can make an impact. So our number one priority is to enlighten. And sometimes that's with a real estate perspective. And sometimes I tell my team, we're going in there, we're seeing these sellers. Like I just told you one of those weird situations I was in. And it's an opportunity to help somebody in sometimes a pretty sad downtime in their life. So if we can go in there with our quote unquote, normal circumstance, right? We're normal, I guess. Not that they, I don't know what that means, but that we can go in there um, because maybe we haven't been hit as hard by something recently in our life and have that perspective, be able to help them. Not only from the real estate perspective, but maybe just shed a little bit light into their life and say, hey, you know, pick them up, dust them off and help them to be better, right? Just shed, just share some of that light. So that's our number one priority to enlighten. Nice. I love it. Yeah. So on that theme, oh, sorry. So that's how you'd be successful. If I said at the end of the year, if we don't hit the profit number, but we are profitable and we can say that we've had a lot of in light moments, we are successful. So there, there's the answer to your question. Right. Nice. Well, talking about success, what, how many, how many homes did you wholesale last year? We did 274, 274 deals last year. Yeah. What's the one thing you've learned from that, that you've grown uh, we'll say maybe aggressively over the last few years. Yeah. What's something that's stood out that's, that's been a good and bad from that growth rate. What's been good and bad from just having just, the growth that we've had the company. Yeah, um, I guess uh, you, you've really transcended, right? So maybe you were doing 150 deals and you jumped up to right. 275 deals. Um, that's a big jump. You know, yeah, people listen to this, maybe start doing their first one today and they hear those numbers. What, what's been something that stood out that was maybe, is something that was a hack that allowed you to stay focused and be driven to reach that with something that maybe could be a success hack. If we could just give it to someone who was just starting out that you, you see as something to help you be driven to re reach those goals. Yeah. So what comes to mind is when you're small and kind of keeping it all, you can control all those elements because you're doing everything. I, I came from that place. I was a one man band. I did everything. I did the marketing. I took the phone call. I went to see the people. I prepared the, the appointment. Uh, I project managed. I did everything. Um, and you can control everything. Um, but as you grow, what I didn't recognize was you definitely lose some margin as you grow because you have to bring people to help you with that stuff. What I didn't recognize was as you get a little bit bigger, it becomes a game of managing people to get the result. Because when it's just you, we all know we can work harder and we can make things happen, right? But when you're trying to get those results through other people, you've got all of your team members have their own lives, their own things that are going on too. So how do you inspire them, motivate them and get these things done through them and still keep the same quality that maybe that you would try to do on your own? And it's, and it's a constant struggle. Um, but it's more worth it too, because you're not only just having the impact on those sellers. What I could have impacted maybe for 15, 20, 30 sellers in a year. Now we can impact 274. And I hope that we can have 
a similar experience with more people. So I can have, I can have a greater impact by impacting my team to make an impact. If that makes sense. Yeah. But that's, that's been harder than I thought to, um, to lead the team and make an impact that way. So being a good leader, managing people. It becomes a leadership thing. It becomes a management and not just as much management, leadership, truly, because management is telling somebody, you know, go get this done, get this done. Leadership is like, Kelly, how do you motivate that person to make them want to get it done and see the vision that you see so they can go do it, right? Because I don't want people, I don't want to just say we did 300 houses next year, we got the revenue. You heard my priority. I want to make sure that we do it the right way. I want to make sure that we're really adding value because that means more. That's what success is, not so much did you make more money. You know, that's the, that profit drives the engine. You have to be profitable or else you're not going to be out there impacting other people's lives and spreading that light. But, um, but we are to, to accept that I need to keep my team focused on that vision that that's what they're out there doing. They're not out there trying to like hoodwink somebody to grab an extra buck. That's then we lost our priority. We might've made more money, but we lost the priority in the mix of it. And I don't want to do that. Yeah. No, and our listeners out there should take that to heart. You're not out there. You are out there to make a profit. Like Andy said, but you're also out there to help people. I mean, if you have that in your heart, you're going to succeed no matter what. I mean, because helping first is the way to go. There's a great scripture. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and thieves do not break through nor steal. That's what it is, right? What are we trying to do here? The things that we come, we think the money is the value. We, we kind of started this conversation here, right? But the things you get for free, you don't necessarily value. But the money, if you get more value, if you gain the whole world, but lose your soul, as the scriptures would say, what did it profit the man, right? Nothing. But at the end of all thing, your money can go away. But what did you do? Were you successful? Were you successful? So don't, don't, don't try to, um, don't put your treasures where moth and rust doth corrupt. Nice. That's great. When you hear advice that is given pretty frequently for real estate investors, which, what's something that stands out in your mind that you absolutely disagree with? I disagree with goodness. What advice do I get from those? Yeah, what's the worst advice somebody's ever given you? <laughs> That's a, I should have been prepped for these questions before. <laughs> the worst advice. Um, we're, we're you know, like well, we don't, we don't like to prepare that anybody gave me again on top of mind. I don't know. This is the worst advice, but I was top of mind. Sorry, dad. I got fired from my last W2 job. I was working on a dock. And uh, I was doing real estate on the side at the time. And I came home and my dad begged me. He said, please go back and get your job back. Please go get your job back. He said, don't let this be on your resume. Don't let this define you. Dad. Go get your job back. And I said, dad, I want to do real estate. I think I can do this. And he was just like, just, yeah. Does that make sense? He's just like... It does make sense. Sounds something like that my dad would say. It, yeah. it wasn't... I mean, I said it was the worst advice because of course, if I'd have followed his advice, then I, it, I wouldn't know, do, you know, have an impact and... And my life wouldn't be what it is today. But uh, I realized from him, it was like he was speaking through his paradigm. He was trying to give me the best advice he could, yeah. Yeah. but it just wasn't the right one for me. So it wasn't necessarily real estate advice, but it was his advice. You know? No, that was, uh, that was a good Sorry, advice. Dad. That sounds so horrible. What's the worst advice you ever got? Oh my God. <laughs> well, doesn't sound like the worst advice. It sounds like yeah. a parent trying to protect mm -hmm. his life. Yes. And that, that, that's definitely uh, something strong. Yeah. yeah. And like, there's always, and again, that wasn't the worst advice, but it was a worst advice if you'd followed it. And that go. goes to show you that in life, people are going to give you good advice, but it's not always going to be the advice that will take your life to the next level. Mm. You knew what good you had point. to do. Good point. Good point. So how would you like people to remember you and your company? Um, from the impact, I'd like them to say that the individual impact, the one by one impact, not so much the, the grand scale, they did this, they moved, you know, they did this much revenue, they did this many houses. The more the one, I would rather have the memories of just one by one impact. That one person says, I remember those guys, they did this for me, or I remember this, they did that for me. That would be it. And, and, and in fact, nobody's ever going to know that's never going to be show up anywhere. It's not going to show up on a podcast, it's not going to show up on a PL stand, but, but that's where we're successful. That's where our priority lies. So that's what I want. I just want those, the things that will come up someday, I feel like after this life, potentially. That's not why I'm doing them necessarily, to build up treasure in heaven. That's not what it is. But those things that that means something, right? That impact people's lives, even if it's just small things, a smile, a kind word, helping them move something. And there's some bigger things we do in the real estate world, right? Um, that's what I hope. I hope it's just the one-by-one -one impacts. 
No, I can see that. I mean, because I can tell you from from experience with you that Jason and I aren't going to remember you as the guy that did 270, 300 deals, although that's really cool. <laughs> We're going to remember you as our mentor, somebody who was our friend, somebody who has helped us build our business. So thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I hope that I hope that, that would be the case that somebody would Regardless of the deals you do, and it, whatever, I go bankrupt next year. I don't know. You know, you don't know what's going to happen to you. But I hope somebody can say that he helped me become a better person, or like, yeah. made me want to be better. Got it. We'll take some of the deep questions off you because <laughs> there you go. Hard. <laughs> what's, what's your go-to meal? Go-to meal: uh, Chipotle burrito, probably. Awesome. Nice. If yeah. you had to battle Tyrannosaurus Rex, what weapon would you use? Oh man, Tyrannosaurus Rex. We have this conversation a lot at my house. My four-year-old, almost five-year-old. <laughs> He, uh, which is, we know, we know dinosaurs. He knows them better than me, but he always asks me, um, which would win between a Megalodon and a Tyrannosaurus Rex. And his answer is generally the Megalodon. So I would say I would use a Megalodon if I had to. That's a great well, answer. That's an awesome answer. I've not had that one. We yeah. love it. So it's <laughs> awesome. Another dinosaur. I love yeah. it. Um, so what is, ah, oh, I thought we weren't going to do the hard questions anymore. Oh boy. Oh, yeah. One more for you. And then, I guess then one, more, one more hard yeah, question. One then. more hard question. Yeah. What is your greatest fear as an entrepreneur? As an entrepreneur? Uh-huh. You know, I, I think I'm, I don't know that I'm unique in this. I do have a little imposter syndrome, like a lot of people have, but my greatest fear is probably starting over. Um, my greatest fear and, and, I, I, I don't want to let people down. That's probably what it is. It's not starting over so much for me, but I've got a team and a lot of people, not, I mean, my family and my extended family and my brother works with me and my sister, I do some stuff with her and my parents, I kind of help them with things. And then my you know, in-laws and other people. So people like think, look at me and they think, Oh, well, he's got it all figured out. Right. So I would hate to, um, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't know if this is sound bad. I, I don't want to, I don't want to let people down. Right. Uh, so, and I feel like failure and I don't, I know in my conscious mind that that wouldn't be letting people down, but I feel like if I stop succeeding the way they think I should succeed, that it'd be letting them down. And I don't want them to, to think of them not succeed because of something that I did that something screwed up or whatever. Right. So that's probably my biggest fear. Does that I understand sense? that. I mean, cause you've grown so much and so well and so fast. Like if it were all to stop, there are a lot of people who are counting on that success, but right. That said, it doesn't mean that you failed. It just means that life happened. Right. And does that make me less of a person? No, consciously, no. I know it doesn't. But um, can I have the same impact? Probably not. People might look and say, well, Andy said this, but then look what happened to him, right? So I feel like I do have to keep having that, that temporal worldly success so that people can look at me and so that I can have an impact where it probably really matters. So, yeah. That's great. It kind of keeps you going. It does. Yeah. It, it does. Keeps we asked this question on the last podcast, but uh, we this is always something we love to. Maybe it's changed. Is if someone's listening to this for the first time, maybe they're just trying to start their real estate journey. They're trying to to find their way to to improve their life. What what would be an actual step they can take today to get started in real estate? You know, I, I've always I say this, but find people who've done what you want to do and just kind of emulate them because I'm not special. And most, all the people that have done the real estate stuff aren't really special. They've just found somebody who's doing something that they want to do, especially local people that are doing something in your market. If one person's doing it, you can do it too. It's just a matter of doing it and not analysis paralysis of like learning so much and then not implementing stuff, but just doing it, seeing this person did it. What did they do? And start taking those steps that they did. And if you do that, you'll get what they got. That's just, that's just how it's going to be. And you won't fail if you mess up the first, second, third step, whatever, as long as you keep iterating that and keep trying and learning from your mistakes, then you'll get there eventually, right? So it's not overnight success. It really isn't. People, there's some people that do it faster than others, but all of us struggle. We don't show that on Facebook. We don't show that on the podcast and social media. But but that's you hear the success, but you don't see the struggle behind the success. Just recognize there is struggle behind the success, but you're going to power through it. Have that mindset of like, no matter what, I'm going to power through it. Because worst case scenario, I'm going to learn. And I'll be better for it. Nice. Worst case scenario, I'm going to learn. Yeah. I like that worst case scenario. Yeah. So you've already given us so much, but give us, give us some words to live by. Words to live by. I don't, I'm, I'm just, I just thought of a character quote and I don't, I don't know that I don't know the quote, but just, um, 
uh, I'm going to butcher it, but that whole idea of like, be the, be the person in front of the curtain as you are behind the curtain. Right. So do all the things you would do when, when even when people aren't watching, right. Yeah. Just be the same. That's great. Some good words. Well, Andy, thank you so much. And, uh, if you're listening here and you like what you've heard, uh, please go to iTunes and give us a far, five star rating and review. And, uh, if you want to see Andy's amazing bookshelf with all his books and his, <laughs> his, his goal journals and, and all his <laughs> fabulous items and say hello to Andy. Yeah. Right there. Uh, you can check us out on youtube.com slash the REI foundation podcast. And Andy, where can our listeners, uh, say hello to you or maybe get on your buyers list? Oh my goodness. Buyers list. Uh, Salt Lake Wholesale Properties.com, get Indie Wholesale Properties.com, I think, and New Mexico Wholesale Homes.com. I think those are landing pages for that. They can be on the buyers list that way. Um, and get a hold of me. I don't know. That's a good question. I used to say I love real estate stories, but it's not so much anymore. Well, know. if uh, that's still on YouTube, though, right? Oh, yeah, it's still there. They're all still so there. Yeah. Our listeners should take take a look at that. They're yeah, that great out. information and some of the stories that Andy tells. Ooh, Amazing. super super funny. <laughs> Those are fun. Those are fun to do. Yeah, That's yeah. It. They can reach out to me there. Thank you, Andy. Well, thank you so much, so so much, Andy. Well, this is the REI Foundation podcast with Jason and Peely. Again, thank you so much, to Andy McFarlane. Yeah. Don't sign yes, off. One yet. more thing. Because I want to turn around and thank you guys. Because you guys have done over 100 episodes of this, bringing people uh, allow, and bringing this impact to other people for free. You guys are putting your time, effort, energy, money, all of this into this so people can be driving in their car, watching their TV, or watching on YouTube, and they can see this stuff. So thank you guys for taking the effort and your time and your special abilities to bring this stuff to the world. You guys deserve a round of applause. I'm going to give it to you. You hear everybody oh, I'm blushing. They're all clapping right now for you guys. Uh, thank it. you guys. <laughs> Our first podcast. Standing ovation. We love that. <laughs> Stand up and thank, thank you. you That's really appreciative. Thank, <laughs> thank you guys you so much. much. We value your time, Andy. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you again, Andy. Well, bye now. We appreciate each of you listening to our show. And if you like what you hear, please go to iTunes and leave us a five star rated review. Five stars. And Give us some questions on Facebook. We'd love to have your questions answered by our guests on some of our next show. You can find us on Facebook at the REI Foundation Podcast with Jason and Peely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for tuning into the REI Foundation Podcast. Check back next time for more awesome tips and strategies to launch your new you in real estate.